Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here with Photoshop Master FX Training. And in this video, I've got a cool little animation trick that you can do in Photoshop pretty much from scratch. Now, it kind of became an afterthought on a project I recently posted on the Master FX Training site, um, which is this one right here. And it's creating this cool kind of fiery spark and particle uh, effect and you know what the all the cracks in the face and everything like that this project is again as i said live now over at the master effects training site so if you're a member you can go check it out and if you follow it along you can do this cool trick that i'm about to show you um after you've done it or you can apply this to almost any image you want to add this kind of cool fiery effect to i just thought it was a really neat use of animation here inside photoshop so we're going to start by creating a new document and just make it a thousand by a thousand pixels at a hundred pixels per inch. So give it a very small square element here and make my background black. I'm just going to press command I. I'm just going to make a new blank layer and give it a base color fill. Now make sure your default colors are set. So just press D on the keyboard and then go to the filter menu and go to noise and add noise. Now, Set the amount to around 100%. Nothing really higher really needs to be. Um, um, actually, I'm going to drop that to like 75, rather. Um, distribution, you can do... Um, it really doesn't make a difference here, you can see, because uniform or Gaussian. Um, Gaussian is a little bit more uh, rougher, I guess you could say. So go ahead and set it that. And then also make sure that monochromatic is checked on as well, and then click OK. Then you're going to go to filter again, and this time go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. Now you're going to give it a really small blur, about five pixels, no more than five pixels will be fine. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Then we're going to do a levels adjustment here. So go ahead and press Command or Control L, and you're going to push the highlight and shadow sliders in so much until you get this kind of scattered particle element looking here here's something like that so you want to have you don't want to have a whole lot of these elements but you want to have a good amount of them something like there we go I think that'll work so yeah I've got these sliders really close and we're creating this overall um, kind of look here let's actually do that there we go I think I like that better all right so click OK on that one now you're going to need to do a little bit of an offset because we're going to be defining this as a pattern. We can't have anything really on the edges here. You'll notice there are some of these particles that are right at the edge. We go to the filter and choose, or go to other and choose offset. You're going to see, if you move these sliders, you can see how the tiling is going to look when we uh, create it that way. And right now, we obviously have some lines here. So just set it there and then click OK. And to adjust this, I like to use the patch tool. Normally I would do a content aware fill, but I notice that content aware fills doesn't usually give me the results I want. So go ahead and make sure your patch tool is set to content aware and then just draw over the areas and add some of those random particles in there. Well, let's actually undo that a couple of times. There we go. Okay. And just kind of use it to reintroduce particles in areas where there aren't any. So maybe this little area here, something like that. There we go. So now over in the channels palette, we want to load what we see as an active selection, just these little white dots here. So I'm going to go ahead and command click on the RGB channel, and it's going to load that layer as an active selection or load those or basically it makes a luminosity based selection so those little white dots are all the selected areas so i'm going to create a new blank layer and fill it with white so now if i turn off the original particle layer there so now we have these elements on their own layer right there so it's just a few random dots on on here and the varying sizes and such like that so now we want to define this as a pattern. Now I need to define this without a background. So turn off that black background layer. And you can hardly see the dots, of course, against the transparent background, but that's fine. But we do need the background to be transparent for this next step. So go under the edit menu and go to define pattern. And it's going to define just those dots 
and leave the trans uh, the background transparent. So go ahead and hit OK there. There we go. So now I'm going to turn back on the background layer and let's create a new blank layer. And then give it a base color again. 50% gray is fine. There we go. So now we're going to add that particle element over as a pattern overlay here. So just go ahead and open up the layer style panel for this layer. Go to pattern overlay and activate it. And then locate the pattern. Should be the very last one apply. There it is. Now remember, once you have a pattern in place, you can move it around inside of the image here manually. Now we don't see the background, of course, as that's because we got to go to the blending options here and then set the fill opacity to zero. And that black background we're seeing is the background layer here. So we're actually getting transparency on this effect here. So now we're ready to animate. So, and just so you know, we're not dealing with, I'm actually gonna make this a color background just so you can see that there is in fact transparency on those layers there. So now, like I said, we're ready to animate this. So let's go ahead and open up our timeline. and create video timeline, there we go. And let's go ahead and animate this. So in order to animate the movement of these particles, we're gonna to have to animate the style. You'll notice you have three properties you can animate here um, by default, position, opacity, and style. So we're gonna um, set a keyframe for style and then let's move the playhead to around the three second mark. Three to five seconds is fine. Actually, I'm going, to go to, I'm going to go to the full five seconds. Why not? We're going to do that because we can. All right. So put the playhead right there at the end of it. And then you're going to go into that layer style. And while the panel's open, I'm going to start at the bottom of the document and then click and drag up one full length of the, uh, the image there. Maybe a little bit further. And then click OK. Now you'll see it automatically puts a new keyframe, and that's because we've changed the property from this keyframe to this one. So if I play it through, you'll see that there is a little bit of movement of those various elements. Okay, pretty good. So now what I wanna do is add a layer style to have these elements kind of having a hot glow to them. But the problem is I can't do it to the layer now. You'll notice that we've already got a full fill on this layer and it's already running this pattern and generating, generating that animation effect there. So we're going to have to contain this in a smart object. So I'm going to control click right on the uh, layer here and then choose convert to smart object. And that's going to go ahead and contain it. Now the animation is still intact and we've got all this going on inside of that smart object there. So now on the smart object layer, we're going to add um, our outer glow or our heat kind of um, styling here. First thing is we're going to add is an outer glow. And it's right down here. There it is. And I'm going to set, actually, before I do that, I'm going to set my background back to black here. There we go. So again, we're on this. We've contained the animation in a smart object, and that's going to help us maintain the transparency. So we're going to add an outer glow. And we're going to make that a red outer glow here. Right, there we go. Size, got to bring it down quite a bit here. There we go. And we're going to add an inner glow. This is going to be more of a yellowish orange hot color here. There we go. And that's going to give us that glow there. So let's go ahead and add this. So if I increase the spread a little bit there you can see I got that going on so that looks pretty good okay so now you can see with the glow on there now it's picking up the glow and now we got these embers kind of like pushing through and, and doing their little thing there however they're following along a very straight line it seems it almost looks like you know it doesn't really look like it should because the embers tend to have this kind of chaotic, random uh, direction changing kind of thing happening when they're um, when you're when you're doing the effect on them. So we're going to do a couple of different things to achieve that. First thing is we're going to do is a displacement map. 
So I'm going to go to my image menu and go to here and choose duplicate just to make a new document of the same size. We're going to go ahead and flatten this document. And then we're going to add a clouds fill, standard clouds fill, just like that. Now you can add contrast to a cloud fill by holding down the option key or alt key if you're on Windows and then go with that render and choose clouds again. And then we're going to put a really big blur on it. So Gaussian blur yet again and really bump it up kind of like that. So where you can see the varying light and dark tones, but just subtle enough. A little bit of an adjustment there. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to save this as a displacement map. And let's go ahead and save that to the desktop as a PSD file. There we go. So now back in here, I'm, I don't want to apply it to this layer directly because of this layer styling here. I'm actually going to go ahead and nest this within a smart object itself. So we've got a smart object within a smart object here. And now we're going to apply our displacement map and it's going to be applied as a smart filter. So I'm going to set both the vertical and uh, horizontal scale at 25, click OK. There's my displacement map and click open. And now as I push this through, you can see the embers kind of slightly shifting their direction. See that little bit? It's kind of bending along the displacement map there. Actually going to do it a little bit more than that. Let's go ahead and set these both to 50. And again, displace. And now you can see it's kind of just kind of random randomization of there, just kind of pushing through there. It gives you a good idea. Okay. So now let's take this back into our document here and position the layer in the background, the very bottom of the layer stack here. There we go. And let's turn the timeline back on and we can see now there are embers kind of pushing through there. Now the great thing about this is that it is a random design element. So I'm actually going to rotate it, scale it. But in addition to that, this is also very cool. Go and choose the warp again and really distort this image. And like I said, with particle, with, um, Particle elements, I guess, especially spark elements, as it travels through, it's going to follow along those, um, the lines or the contours of that. In addition to the displacement map, we're going to have a really true random kind of em uh, glowing embers effect kind of flowing through the image here. So it's going to render the effect for a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead so you can see the finished render here. Now, I added a little bit of a blur to the sparks just because they were in the background area there. But now you can see the animation is fully rendered and has the randomization of you would expect embers to have as they were flying through the air there. You can see it's just kind of going in its own direction. And I didn't get too crazy with warping it, but you can by all means go a little nuts with it and try different distortions. It is abstract in the end. Um, I can see that they're obviously disappearing before they leave the scene here. So that's just a matter of adjusting <clears throat> the scale of the finished image there. So I'm just going to push that up there. And warp it a little bit differently. But again, this is the kind of fun you can have with this particular effect. Try it on different images as a foreground design element or a main design element. But just uh, try different uh, settings and you can get custom made floating embers in your designs right here in Photoshop. So again, as I mentioned, uh, you want to check out um, the project this is uh, associated with, which is over at the Master Effects training site uh, at MasterFXTraining.com and you can uh, download um, and you can access this. If you're a member, you can access this entire project from beginning to end and see how it all comes together and then add this cool animated floating ember effect when you're done. Thank you guys again. We'll see you next time.